Hi, Brian White is filling in for Buck. Welcome to Discovering. September 21st and 22nd mark the weekend of Michigan's Liberty Hunt. We'll take a look at what that means for our disabled veterans as well as all persons with disabilities. You know, we're, we're trying to put this, uh, this program in place all over the nation and it's just a, a great thing. Then it's time for a trip to the gun shop to find out about the correct way to pattern a shotgun. The pattern is fairly evenly distributed but there are a few areas that are void of shell, uh, of shot. And archery season is here. We'll get some insight on what we can do to be ready for the upcoming hunt. When you spin this arrow, you'll notice that it spins perfectly true. There's no wobble to that arrow whatsoever. That's all tonight on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a longtime lover of northern Michigan. Well, fall is officially here. The leaves are changing, the days are getting shorter, and Halloween is not far off. It's not possible to think about fall here in the UP without thinking about deer hunting. September 21st and 22nd mark the weekend of the first special deer hunt of the year here in the Upper Peninsula. In past years, this hunt was known as the Youth and 100% Disabled Veterans Firearm Deer Hunting Days. This special hunt was limited to veterans with 100% disability and youth under the age of 17. The NRC recently modified the rules for eligibility for this hunt to include all persons with disabilities and renamed it the Liberty Hunt. It's hard to think about hunting opportunities for our disabled without thinking about the Wheeland Sportsman. Another uh, great time of the year to, to get out with the Wheeland Sportsman. Uh, we had a, a few changes done this year uh, working with the Accessibility Advisory Council. Uh, before this hunt here was for youth, uh, 16 and under, and disabled veterans only. And, uh, on the Accessibility Council, we, we talked things over and it's like, you know, a lot of people never had an opportunity to be a veteran. You know, they were born with disabled or had some kind of accident. So let's make it a little bit fair for everybody. So we talked it over in the council and handed it over to the Natural Resources Commission. And uh, matter of fact, it just went into, into law on July 12th. And uh, what a great thing, just more opportunities. That's what we're always looking for. Now, plus we got flexibility with the tag. Uh, before we had to had to have a, if you had a buck tag, then you had to take a, a buck, and if you had a doe tag, then you had to take a doe. So now with the flexibility and the license tag, boy, that just provide, provides more opportunity. If you have a buck tag, you can shoot a buck or a doe, and if you got a doe tag, you can shoot a, a buck or a doe also. And uh, boy, it's, it's nice, because disabled and stuff, they don't have a lot of, they don't have a lot of extra money. And uh, you know, and, and opportunities are, are a, lot of, a lot of times pretty short. So this is just uh, more opportunity and uh, more, more good that we can do. And uh, you know, we're, we're trying to put this, uh, this program in place all over the nation. And it's just a, a great thing. We have a lot of veterans and, and say the same thing with the, with the youth and all disabled people. So we're hoping to move forward with this here and, and have a good time. And uh, just like I said, provides more opportunity. So. My name is Billy Joe Spudo, I'm a first hunter. Me and Kenny Buckles and Dennis Dano went to um, Kamen Dudes 
last Saturday at 2 o'clock. And me and him tore it up, me and Dennis. And I'm hoping to tear this up too. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Buck. <laughs> there he is, Austin. See the horns on him? Still velvet. Nice looking deer, eh? Working with the with the group here with uh, partnering for veterans and stuff too. The governor is uh, he's appointed uh, Jason Allen now for uh, for helping working with the veterans and letting them know about what programs are going on uh, here in Michigan. Is uh, one of the worst states in the whole nation on taking care of disabled veterans. So the governor is trying to improve that now, and uh, you know that's why we're all working together now. Say so we got the the people from the from the army, and we got people uh, like us from the Wheel and Sportsmen and. Jacob Eddy Center, uh, Department of Natural Resources, Governor's Office. It's uh, we're all teaming up to make things better for the veterans, and there, there's extra money out there now too for education. So, you know, a lot of times uh, people get disabled and they, they can't do the same thing they've done before, and so this gives them opportunity to get educated and go into a different field or whatever they're capable of doing with their with their disabilities. So, uh, you know, we got uh, three trailers, and uh, we're actually looking at building a fourth one here over the winter. And uh, God, we've been just having so much fun and. Of course, on one of your last shows there, we had that uh, mobile unit, which is in this blind right here. And uh, we're going to try to get some more opportunities going for during the winter months for crossbow target shooting and, uh, and also like small rimfire, like uh, 22 caliber and stuff. So we're looking to get more programs going for people with disabilities. Uh, we've been, uh, all of that stuff, we're just starting to move forward with some of that and put some plans into place. And uh, God, we're, we're looking forward to some really great stuff and uh, just can't wait. A huge thanks to the entire Whelan Sportsman crew for all their hard work and dedication in helping our disabled and our veterans. If you'd like to help out, please contact Ken Buckholtz at 553-2268. Well, archery season is here, and the importance of having ourselves and our gear ready cannot be overstated. I talked with Randy Gustafson of Northwoods Wilderness Outfitters in Iron Mountain to get some pointers on things we can do to make sure we're ready for the hunt. No matter whether you have a longbow, recurve, compound, or a crossbow, you've, you've got to practice. And particularly with the crossbow is in the fact that you have to be very familiar with the bow, how it works, cocking it, unloading it, how the safety works. 
that's the biggest reason to practice with the crossbows. Not only do you want to make sure that it's sighted in, but you want to make sure you're familiar with it so that when, when you're using it, it's almost second nature that, that you're not going to uh, have the safety on when that big buck comes. And you, know, you want to make sure that everything is up to snuff with the bow, but also with you and using your bow. Uh, the traditional guys, they'll practice all year long. A lot of compound guys shoot all year long, but if you don't, you know, make sure you get out practice, make sure everything's flying right. Double check your broadhead flight, make sure that that's flying the same as your field tips. Um, and then of course you want to check your bow over, make sure everything's good. Compound bows, go around, tighten up all the little screws. Then of course look the cables over, the string, make sure the serving is good. Uh, guys that are using a, a peep sight with the tube, two dollars, replace the tube. It, it's a simple thing to do every year, but if that breaks, your tube, your peep sight will, will, will spin, it won't be lined up and, and you won't be able to hunt. Um, you know, lube your uh, string, wax your string good, your cables. On the compounds, check your servings around the pulleys. Make sure that, you know, they're not cracked, ready to break. Double check your release, make sure that's working good. Uh, you want to be ready. On the crossbows, they're a little bit more complicated, a lot more things to watch for, a little bit more maintenance intensive. Um, this crossbow here, uh, the fella had it hanging in his garage. It looks like a mouse chewed on his cable, so now he's going to have to have his cables replaced. Usually what we like to do when we do that is we'll put string and cables on so that it's a match set and everything's timed and it's, and it's, it's going to shoot correctly. Uh, on this, this crossbow right here, the, the rail wasn't waxed properly all the time and he wore through his serving. You can see that it wore through and it needs to be reserved now. That, that isn't a real big deal, but it has to be done. Make sure you wax your string, lube your cables. On the crossbows, the compound crossbows, that have, you have to put a little bit of lube in here. This, this crossbow happens to have a slide in here. You can see where the cables go through the plastic slide and that's good but you, this still has to be lubed up. Uh, on, on the cheaper ones, that, that, this cable is rubbing on the top of this cable slot, and that it's really critical that those be lubed up really, really well, or you'll wear through the cables. And if this breaks and blows apart, it's gonna be a really expensive repair. It could break a limb. Uh, the other thing on the crossbow is it's super important that you tighten all of the bolts, make sure Everything's tight. Make sure that these bolts are tight, this is tight. Make sure your limb bolts are tight. Make sure that nothing's vibrating, gonna rattle loose. And then of course, on your scope, you wanna make sure that all, everything is really tight. There's a tremendous amount of force when you fire a crossbow, a lot of vibration. That's where this stuff can come loose. So it's just real simple maintenance. The other thing you wanna check out, and, and this is the most critical part of your complete outfit, is your arrow. Uh, arrow and broadhead are what actually kills the animal. Every bow out there, whether it's a longbow, recurve, compound, crossbow, all they are is an arrow launcher. Some do it a little better than others, but that's what they do. They launch the arrow. The arrow <coughs> is, is critical. It has to be a good quality. It's got to be well balanced. It's got to be tuned to the bow. There's more to arrows than just buying an arrow and, and putting a broadhead on it and going hunting. Um, <coughs> We kind of pride ourselves in the fact that we know arrows. Uh, we, we love to help guys get their arrows fly correctly. A couple things you want to watch for. You'll notice that the broadhead is perfectly lined up with the veins. Everything is in line and that's critical. On a two blade broadhead what you want to do, you want to line it up so that both of the blades are lined up with the hen feathers or, or the two solid colored feathers. The other thing that you have to watch and we run into this a lot with low-end arrows coming from discount stores and whatnot. When you spin this arrow, you'll notice that it spins perfectly true. There's no wobble to that arrow whatsoever. It's not going to do this in flight. Everything is critical, very critical that you, you shoot really good arrows, really good broadheads. Everything is balanced um, and, and the right spine, the right length for your bow at, at <coughs> your draw length and your poundage. It's, it's, there's a lot to arrows, a lot more than people think. And again, this is the most critical part of the whole outfit. This is what kills the animal. This has to fly extremely well 
or you're not going to get good groups. Um, you want a really good, super sharp broadhead. Again, doesn't matter what kind of bow you're using. It's just going to make a better shot, better kill, uh, better penetration. Um, and we, we really like the cut on contact. Uh, these three blade broadheads work extremely well on crossbows, by the way. Okay, one of the <clears throat> safest ways to unload or decock your crossbow is to shoot it. These new decocking bolts are just, they're great. It's a super heavy shaft. Uh, you can get them with either the, the V-knock or the flat knock so that it'll work in any crossbow. It's got a super heavy tip on it. And you just shoot it into the ground. You won't lose your arrow. You can unload your bow. It's super safe. Um, it, it's just, a, it was a really neat invention. Uh, we really push these with every crossbow we sell. It doesn't matter whether it's one of the Excalibur recurves or a Wicked Ridge or a 10 point. These things work really well. You wouldn't think of heading out on opening morning of deer season without knowing your rifle is dead on. But what about your shotgun? It's not something we sight in, but we certainly should know what to expect when we pull the trigger. I stopped in at the gun shop to get the scoop on patterning a shotgun. There's a number of different ways of patterning your shotgun. Some of them practical and a couple of them are very, very complicated and mathematically convoluted. Uh, Oberfell and Thompson is one of the the complicated methods and then the NRA method is also a very complicated one. With both of those uh, patterning methods you do your your shooting all from 40 yards and you're shooting at a main uh, circle of 30 inches and the percentage of shot that hits the target is then calculated and used to to determine whether your shotgun is shooting a, a full choke pattern, a modified or an improved cylinder or a cylinder pattern. And all of these uh, complicated methods involve having to actually physically count how many shots hit or, or pieces of shot hit the target in whatever the area is that you're calculating. So there's a lot of counting and a lot of math involved. And uh, there's a much easier way. There's a practical method for, for doing this process. With that method, you use a 30 inch main circle, just like the other one, but you vary the distance to the target. So at full choke, you do your shooting from 40 yards, just like they do with, uh, with all of them for the complicated method. But then for modified, you go to 35 yards, for improved cylinder, 30 yards, and for cylinder bore, which is no choke at all, 25 yards. And what you're really looking for is your even shot distribution. You check your patterns and see how the particular one is that you used, but then you want to, just like you do for your rifle, selecting the, the particular load and bullet and so forth that, that is going to perform best for your rifle. You do the same thing with your shotgun and you get a variety of them and you try a variety of them because no two are going to perform the same. Uh, whether you're using uh, Federal shells, Winchester, Estate or Remington, it doesn't matter. They're all going to perform a little bit differently. And if you vary the shot size, that's going to be another variable. And then the other variable would be your dram equivalents of, of your your shot charge. So what you want to do is select the one that gives you the best performance uh, in your particular gun. I prefer to use a cardboard disc and then I put my 30 inch core that I'm going to be using just by running a border on it and then give myself an aim point uh, for my shot. Okay, we've, we've taken our shot from a, a prescribed distance. This particular distance happens to be 25 yards because I'm using a skeet tube, which is very close to a cylinder bore. Now we'll look at our target and see how this particular shell performed. We pretty well filled our 30 inch circle and the pattern is fairly evenly distributed, but there are a few areas that are void of, shell, uh, of shot. When you're evaluating 
your your target to know if the load is going to be a, a good one for that particular gun that you're shooting you can just put your fists there for the voids and just put an x there or mark them if you wish and then see how many voids you have in that pattern this would have been a, a very thoroughly killing shot on most flying game you notice on this particular target it's a little heavier distribution of shot above the center line than it is below and that's because most shotguns are set up so that your aim point being here you would have your bird up in this position just sitting on your front bead and so you want your shotgun to shoot up into this area more because that's the, the natural aim point that uh, most shotguns are set up for. You notice in this pattern, uh, they've done the five inch circles on it and all of the five inch circles, there's a lot of them, which means that this particular pattern would not be uh, a very effective pattern on, on game. So you better be shopping for a different uh, shot shell. This one, much less voids in the core area, only partial one here. And if you notice the pattern, the major voids are down in the lower half of the quadrant on this. So this one would be a pretty adequate shell to use on game. So in summary, you can get as complicated or as basic as you want to. It is a good idea if you want to be as effective in the field as possible to go out and buy a few boxes of various shells to try. But it's interesting to know what your individual gun is going to do and if that's the gun that you're going to stick with, you really should go to the effort of at least patterning it so that you know yourself how that gun is, is shooting. Well, that's it for this week. Here's a couple reminders. Trout season on inland lakes and streams comes to a close today. Trout fishermen will have to hold out for seven months before hitting the water again in April. An archery season opens tomorrow. And for many hunters, the weapon of choice is the crossbow. Any licensed hunter who has obtained a free crossbow stamp may use a crossbow during the early archery deer season and any season in which a firearm is allowed for both big and small game. This does not include the late archery season or muzzleloader season. If you're heading out bow hunting in the morning, good luck. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Thank you.